Parasitic gastroenteritis, or PGE, is still the leading cause of death and poor performance in lambs in the UK. PGE is caused by a wide range of worm species in lambs and a different range of species in cattle. For PGE, we tend to lump these different species of worms together, mainly because they cause disease and are treated in much the same way. However, there is an exception when it comes to the first species of worm that lambs in the UK are likely to meet. This is Nematodirus batis. A quick bit on the terminology. The species of worm we're talking about, as I said, is Nematodirus batis. The disease it causes is officially Nematodirosis. In practice, both the species and the disease are often referred to simply as nematodirus. And that's what I'm going to do here, but if you see those terms elsewhere, that's how they relate to nematodirus. So what makes nematodirus different? Like the other major species of worm that affect sheep, it's a roundworm. However, it is uniquely sensitive to the local climate, and this has an effect on how the disease emerges. So eggs that are deposited on pasture the previous year by sheep, and to hatch, they have a specific climate requirement, and that is a period of cold weather followed by a period of warmer weather, specifically 10 degrees Celsius or warmer. When these conditions occur, there is what we call a mass hatch. This mass hatch, often occurs at a time in the UK when lambs are just starting to get grazing. This often leads to a perfect storm. Young lambs with little to no resistance to gut worms because they haven't yet met them, and a massive all-in-one challenge. Clearly, there are a number of factors that are going to affect the risk on individual farms and individual fields. So one, the weather that year. Two, that pasture's grazing history. Did it have sheep on it last year? or not. Three, the farm's individual topography and microclimate. And four, the age of these lambs grazing. Lambs typically don't start grazing much grass until around about six weeks of age. Although if ewes aren't milking very well, this can be significantly earlier. If they're not eating grass, they're not ingesting these infective larvae. Historically, we'd say farms in the south of the UK would typically see issues with nematodirus around about late April, May, whereas farms further north would see issues late May, early June. But the increasing unpredictability of the weather in the UK is turning a lot of that on its head. In general, those are at best rules of thumb. And what do affected lambs look like? Well, they have stunted growth, often a profuse yellowy green diarrhea, often they are tucked up, and many can die up to 10 to 30% mortality in some affected flocks. To add to this list of woes, those soiled back ends can suddenly become very attractive for flies, so fly strike can become an issue. And because of the stress of the matadaris, pasteurialosis and clostridial diseases can also rear their heads. A diagnosis is often made based on a clinical history, plus or minus a post-mortem, plus or minus some fecal egg counts. Now, there is one caveat with the fecal egg counts, and that is because nematodirus strikes so quickly, it can cause disease before adults have come to mature in the lambs, and hence you can have nematodirus without a positive fecal egg count. That's because the adults haven't yet matured to produce eggs, and so the egg count will be zero. So the fecal egg counts in this specific circumstance can yield a false negative. Thankfully, worm resistance for nematodirus seems to be relatively rare, although not unheard of. As a result, it's generally recommended to use a 1BZ, a white wormer, to treat. But remember, if you have suspicious cases, you need to go and talk to your vet about it. At the very least, you need to rule out other causes of stunted or dying lambs, coccidiosis, clostridial diseases, and so on, before going and treating. Plus, your vet will be able to advise on avoiding this same problem next year. And that leads us nicely onto prevention. The more purely preventative and probably in the long term more sustainable approach is to avoid grazing this high risk pasture with lambs. High risk pasture being any pasture that's been grazed with lambs in the previous 12 months. For farmers with the benefit of mixed enterprises, cattle, cropping, pigs and so on, this is evidently more possible than those running purely sheep based outfits. If this high High risk grazing can't be avoided, then we rely on the strategic use of wormers to treat the problem. 
But how do we know when to treat? As I alluded to earlier, a negative fecal egg count is useful, but not 100% because it can yield these false negatives. Many of our farmers will give a 1BZ a white drench as a first dose, often alongside, say, a fly poron product, a long-acting B12, and a clostridial vaccine. This is great from a labor point of view, getting all these jobs done at once, but because the timing of that nematodirus mass hatch varies so much year to year, it's perfectly feasible that if you do your white drench at the same time of year, every year, because that's when you treat for flies, that's when you give your first heptavac, that's when you give your trace element treatments, that you are either too late or too early to treat that mass hatch. Certainly in the spring of 2021, we saw a lot of farms which had treated for nematodirus, but actually the mass hatch was later than they treated, and so the lambs were unprotected. Because of this annual variability, unfortunately we can't just put a sticker in the diary every year on the same date to say, reminder, treat for nematodirus. So how do we know when to treat. Number one, monitor your lambs. This doesn't have to be an exact science. If you have access to growth rate data, fantastic. But really just see, has the shine gone off them? Are they starting to scour? Investigate any deaths. That is always a worthwhile activity. If you suspect any issues, get in touch with your vet and discuss further. That leads me on to the next point. Ask your vet, they will be going around the countryside around you. They will be seeing the first cases of nematodirus before you. Just check in with them every now and again during that high risk period. For example, if you're looking to get your lambs in and give them their first clostridial vaccine and you're wondering whether to give them that first white drench at the same time, give them a ring, WhatsApp them, ask them, does that sound about right? Number three is use the great SCOPS nematodirus forecasts. So SCOPS, that's a sustainable control of parasites in sheep. I've mentioned them before. Use the data from 140 weather stations around the UK to estimate the timing of the mass hatch in those individual localities. I'll stick a link to that in the video description. It's a great resource. Watch that like a hawk. It assigns a risk to each station, negligible, low, moderate, high and very high. Read the fine print as well about elevation. Generally, the higher up the hill you go, the later the hatch. After treatment, that's where the fecal egg counts are probably more sensible. That means you can go back, mark your homework, make sure you haven't missed that hatch and that the treatment has worked. Increasingly, nematodirus outbreaks are being reported in lambs in the autumn. This is a bit unusual. It seems perhaps that some eggs don't need the same cold spell before hatching. Lambs that haven't been exposed early in the year are probably going to be higher risk than those that have. These autumn outbreaks of nematodirus seem to be particularly pronounced in southern England and Wales. Remember, for more information about nematodirus, I would advise phoning, texting, WhatsApping your vet. They will know the area around you and they'll know the challenge at any given time. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it so you get notifications about new videos. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment with any feedback. I'll see you next time.